6 o'clock in the morning, the day after the election, we want to bring back in our legal expert, Reggie Mitchell, who is an elections attorney from FAMVIEW at the School of Law there. Reggie, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, well, here we go again, maybe. I don't want to say this is going to be the 2000 election, but there is a possibility right now when you look at the map, and it's a decent possibility that we have some sort of tie at some point this week, whether it's today or on Friday when all the votes are counted, but 269, 269. Uh, if that does happen, a tie would go to the House of Representatives and the state delegations in particular, which right now Republicans have a slim lead. They have 26 to the Democrats, 24, which basically means that Donald Trump would have another four years in the Oval Office. But that could change depending on all these House races. So kind of walk us through that process. Right. As you mentioned, you know, the rules of the Constitution and the amendments say that if there is a back, actually a tie vote, they have until December 8th to solve all election disputes. And so what the president said about possibly going to court, uh, the Supreme Court, all the federal courts mm. and all the state courts, there's a deadline of December 8th. Um, and then the, the electors meet in each state on the 14th. They have until the 6th, the, the House takes office on January 3rd. So senators and representatives by, con by U.S. code on, on, on January 6th. So they'll meet and receive all of the state's decisions. And most of the states, there is no, there's no dispute. Florida, right. for, for example, the 29, there's nothing in dispute about that. So the Republican electors will go to Tallahassee on the 14th of December, and they'll put all their votes according to their loyalty oath for, for President Trump. And so President Trump has already signaled he'll get attorneys to try and take it to either state court or federal court, right. but ultimately he, he's saying, I'm going to appeal to the top court anyway. So oh, yeah, or, like or, or the Bush Supreme Court. in 2000. Where exactly. He, where he's so got they, a 6-3 they, advantage right he, now. 6-3 advantage. And so it, it, were, it remains to be seen if there is some actual legal challenge. We all stayed up late last night and saw right now there's nothing legal about it, but there is, we, we see in, in the horizon, I think it was Pennsylvania, and the judge, the federal judge says, get all of those ballots out of the post office yeah. into, you know, the, the electors, uh, supervisor of elections office, yeah, and that Reggie, was ignored. Reggie, let me just, let me just stop you there, because the, the Secretary of State in Pennsylvania said this could take to Friday to get all the votes counted in Pennsylvania, uh, but it could go beyond Friday, he indicated. Here's a question. Why is there not some sort of federal law in place right now that mandates that all 50 states can start counting their mail-in ballots at the same time. That way we have a president on election night like it used to be in the old days and we don't have states like right now, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, these states that don't start counting until election day and it causes these delays and then it's, it goes to the courts. Why does that not exist? I mean, generally elections have always been left up to the states. There are specific Things, if it affects a fundamental right, a constitutional right, they might, Congress might put it in the Voting Rights Act or, or the Supreme Court may come up with a decision that's supposed to bind all states, but that hasn't really happened yet. And so you saw the hodgepodge of decisions from the Bush v. Corps mm -hmm. telling Florida, you know, you could do it this way in this county, you could do it that way in that county, as long as not discriminate, discriminatory across all counties, but it's still left it up to the states. And so after that, funding was given for, for from the Voting Rights Act funds to try and allow the states to improve their right. systems, but we still leave it up to the states generally. Reggie, do you think we have a winner this week, today? When do you think we've got a winner? It's possible. I mean, this this is historic. I mean, we, we didn't expect to be where we are right now, but right now, according to state law, there, there, there are some states, not Florida, but other states allow ballots to be received if they're postmarked. And so now, the postmark is run by the, you know, the postmaster general, who is a big Trump supporter. So if, if, if the judge can now make orders that are not ignored and the supervisor of elections can gather all those ballots and get them into their offices and fully count them 100 percent, those states will just mm. do whatever, whatever the result came out to be. And then the electors will be chosen from that that, that state's decision. So right now, right. we just got razor thin yeah. margins, yeah. and it's all political, not legal right now. So this could be just the beginning, Reggie. Once again, thank you very much. That is Reggie Mitchell, uh, an election You're attorney from welcome. the FAMU School of Law. Great information there. Uh, we are scrolling all the results at the bottom of your screen right now, including the local results. And you can check on out every single race turned out last night on our free 10 Tampa Bay app.